In the realm of football's titans, Makai Becton emerges as a towering figure, blessed with not only imposing frame of six foot seven and over 360 pounds, but also unexpectedly nimble footwork and functional athleticism. His colossal size, complemented by a rare seven foot wingspan, instills fears in opponents, as he possesses the capacity to forcefully propel defenders off their feet with sheer upper body power. This guy ran a 5.140 at 367 pounds and benched 23 reps with nearly 36 inch arms. Selected by the Jets with the 11th overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, Becton's journey has been marred by injury setbacks, effectively robbing him of significant playing time the past three seasons due to two knee injuries and a high ankle sprain last year. Going into the 2023 season, it was clear that there was doubt on his future prospects with the Jets. Becton made his way back to the field and fought through serious ankle injury for the team, but those concerns became reality after the Jets just signed Tyron Smith to protect Aaron Rodgers' blindside. Now, Becton had met with the Bengals, but left Cincy without a contract, and Trent Brown took the contract a few days later. Orlando Brown Jr. is their left tackle, so Trent will be the right for the Bengals. It is possible, if not likely, that Becton was not willing to play the right tackle position or since he knew that Becton's right knee was not ready to support him on the right side. Now, the Patriots could use a left tackle with Trent gone, but predicting Becton's mark and value becomes a murky endeavor. The Patriots face a daunting conundrum regarding their offensive line, whose performance last season was erratic amidst the chaos of constant injuries across the line. I don't think we ever saw the projected starting offensive line ever play a snap together last year. Trent Brown was injured multiple times or sick. Cole Strange started the season injured and ended the season hurt. David Andrews made it through last season. Um, Anwenu had his ankle surgery that prevented him from starting the season. Reef got injured twice and put on IR. Calvin Anderson, sick. Vidarian Lowe, concussions. Tyrone Wheatley, knee injury IR. McDermott started off the season IR and then finished on concussion. Uh, Stuber made his way back after his injury in 2022, but we barely got to see him. I'm not sure, but I think David Andrews, Jake Andrews, and Mafi were the only guys to make it through the season without spending too much time on concussion protocol or dealing with a major injury. Now, thankfully, the Patriots have re-signed on Wenu, who appears to be finding a home at right tackle. So looked pretty good at right guard last year. David looks to be coming back for another year at center. Strange might be ready for week one, but I think we need to consider Jake Andrews or Mafia at the left. But that left tackle spot is a big question. Now, they signed a core of four, who played right tackle for the Steelers, but played some left in college. I like him, but I'm not sure about him at left. McDormand is more of a right tackle. Vidarian Lowe struggled last year, but he had some good reps at left. Still, I don't think he's ready to be at the top of the depth chart there. Calvin Anderson? Maybe, if he's 100%. Who knows? Wheatley? Not sure. Injuries? Not sure. Stuber? No clue. To me, there is a still a massive hole there at left tackle despite numerous candidates for the position. Prior to the 2023 college and NFL season, I posted my top 24 draft targets for the Patriots, and my leading candidate was Joe Alt at the 11th or 12th pick. Well, <laughs> the season was a disaster. Max gone. And they have the third overall pick in the best QB class in years, if not a decade. So I would think Alt or Olu are not an option here. Thankfully, the offensive tackle group is deep with roughly 12 tackles that should be taken in the first or second round. So you could draft one in the second or maybe even the third. But that third could be pushing it for a starting level left tackle. Plus, the Patriots need an X receiver now that Parker is gone. So that might be pushed to the second round. Either way, unless you get Alt, Olu, Troy, or Kingsley in that first or second round, we are the, either hoping that Karan Amegagaji, Patrick Paul, or maybe Graham Barton can start there. Or maybe JC Latham can make the switch over. But none of these are optimal. I was hoping the Patriots would sign a big deal with a legit left tackle for one year with options. Then they would draft Kingsley Suatamatia in the second round, who has experience at both left and right tackle, 
and have him start his rookie year at the right and possibly take over the left when the veteran's contract is up. Well, my top picks for the veteran were Jonah Williams and Tyron Smith. Both signed, and you can't go back to Trent, who I think would be a sleeper for the Patriots right now. Uh, Pete from the Saints, he's still out there. He's getting up there in age. But to me, Becton is the obvious answer. He would be a reclamation project considering his injury history, but there were plenty of reports that Becton invested significant effort in the 2023 offseason to stay fit and get ready. But it never looked great for him, and his stats point to him struggling. But did he? Now, looking at Becton's tape, his agility shines through, allowing him to execute outside zone blocks with finesse and adeptly maneuver laterally to neutralize opposing threats. There's a raw potential in his ability to bulldoze whatever stands in his path. A potential that could further be unleashed with dedicated refinement. However, amidst the awe-inspiring spectacle of his physical gifts lies the need for polish. While his inside-out pass sets exhibit balance and fluidity, there is a tendency for him to prematurely expose his outside half, leaving him vulnerable for counterattacks. The thunderous force of his punches actually occasionally throws off, off balance. Like, this guy takes his swing and he misses and he almost flops highlighting the necessity for greater control and precision in his movements. In pass pro, Becton's innate quickness limitations necessitate a heightened awareness of defensive schemes, particularly in identifying and reacting to blitzes and stunts. Despite his considerable length, his high hand placement compromises leverage at the point of attack, a flaw that demands correction. Moreover, his positional blocking could benefit from enhanced patience and control ensuring that he remains anchored to the designated landmark and fully engages his length to dominate opponents. Rather than just relying solely on his overwhelming mass, he must refine his technique to control blocks with finesse, rather than just resorting to brute force. Yet, amidst these areas ripe for improvement, there lies a beacon of hope. With the right guidance, Becton possesses the potential to transcend his current limitations and reacquire growth trajectory to be an elite NFL tackle. Though this will be challenging and will require his highest level of commitment, Becton should be motivated to reestablish his market with a fresh start. For the Patriots, they should be seeing Becton as unfulfilled potential that has latent growth from the harsh realities of the NFL's unforgiving landscape. I am sure the Jets would consider him as an option if they didn't need to win now. With Rodgers up there in age and a mess of contracts to deal with over the next two years and no heir apparent behind Rodgers, Becton's rehab and growth is not in their timeline. They need to win now. For the Patriots, I don't think anyone's expecting them to contend anytime soon. They are in the midst of finally dealing with roster capitulation, new staff, new QB, rookies, free agents. They are not positioned to make a big run. Maybe with an elite rookie QB and an ex-wide receiver, they can make a big bounce next year. But... No one's expecting this, right? So why don't you take a shot at Becton with a healthy one-year deal? You got the cap space. You need the position filled. If it doesn't work, okay, you move on. No one's really going to blame you for taking a shot at this guy. But I would also trust Scott Peters to do something with Becton. Because if you can rehab him back to full strength, <laughs> man, you have an absolute unit that has a tone setter, that is nasty, that makes this whole side of the defense collapse when he run blocks. I invite you to go back and watch some of his tape from last season. He got injured in week 11 against the Bills. Prior to that game, he had two bad games at left tackle against the Chiefs and the Eagles. Not bad defenses, right? Then he struggled the next few weeks after the injury, but finished the season fairly strong. Go ahead and watch the Week 17 Cleveland game last year. Miles Garrett had a rough go with Becton despite having the edge on him. Then Becton had his best game against the Patriots the last game of the season. His season wasn't great, but he started off out of position at right tackle, then played great at left for a chunk, got hurt, and still finished the season. If you watch the tape... Man, did the QB hold the ball way too long, and whoever was back there was prone to run into sacks. The Jets' offensive line ranked fourth worst in the NFL with a sack percentage of 10.65%. You can't say that was all Becton, because it wasn't. Now, again, back to the Patriots. They need a left tackle. They have the money. They could benefit going into the draft without glaring need at the fifth-ranked position in the drafting hierarchy. 
which the difference is almost negligible to the left tackle, to the right edge rusher, wide receiver one, and your primary cover corner. Just think about the leverage the other teams will use knowing that you need a quarterback and you need a left tackle and a wide receiver in this draft. How they will overinflate the value of their pick if the Patriots are calling about moving up to get somebody. Or that same team could leverage that over someone else who needs a left tackle. Or they can just claim that the Patriots are willing to give them this many picks and they can leverage that in their other negotiations. Going into the draft with this many glaring needs at some of the most important positions is entering the draft in a vulnerable state even with high draft picks. A business does not go to a negotiating table with this level of desperation. You are a team that needs four first round draft picks and you got one. Getting Becton will at least give you some flexibility. Most importantly, show the fans you're trying and not just punting on this year. If you were right about Becton and things work out, maybe the fans start to believe that the recent decisions involving the organization were the right ones. Plus, you're giving a guy who had a rough start another shot in a new system. I think the Patriots can relate to that. So, what do you guys think about the Patriots possibly targeting Becton? Should they? Can he start at left tackle? Who else can do it? What would the contract be? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.